All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the worst NBA arenas of all time, and it's actually so easy to go back to like the 70s and 80s because some of these NBA arenas, the exteriors of them, it looks like a rundown Amazon warehouse. It's crazy, but first we're going to be focusing on the more modern stuff. And then going back later into the video, but I did quickly want to mention the grand best NBA arena of all time, the Memphis Pyramid. And there's some crazy history on this. Yes, this actually was the Memphis Grizzlies home for a few years, also was the home to the University of Memphis college basketball team. Back in 1954, this project was first thought of by a Memphis artist, and the original plan was to actually have three big pyramids up in Memphis, and the largest of the three would have been scaled two-thirds the size of the Pyramid of Giza near Memphis. So, pretty crazy. You can take a look at the overall design of it. And yes, this currently is the Bass Pro Shop. I don't know if people know. It's kind of a whole big thing. It is the Pyramid. That is the Bass Pro Shop. They turned it into it after all the sports left. It was built in 1991 and sat right around 20,000 people. And you can see the configuration during basketball. That's the pyramid. You look up, it's a pyramid. It's, it's kind of crazy that they decided to do it. I didn't even realize this thing originally hosted college basketball and other sporting events. It has not recently been used as a sports or entertainment venue since 2007 in 2015. It did reopen as a Bass Pro Shop and it is currently known as the eighth wonder of the world now. But honestly, people, they visit Memphis to go to that Bass Pro Shop. It is impressive. It is. But just taking a look at the overall design of it, I mean, it's unique. Does it fit as one of the worst stadiums in NBA history? I mean, it's a freaking pyramid. I don't know. You be the judge of it. I just thought it was a cool story to kick off the video. But let's get into uh, some of the actual worst stadiums in MLS in NBA history, starting with Smoothie King Center, which is still kicking. And this is New Orleans, the Pelicans home arena. It's one of the oldest stadiums built in the early 90s. You remember when New Orleans randomly hosted like back-to-back -back NBA All-Star games because the NBA was like, oh, we're not going to go to Charlotte because I don't even know what it was. But um, either way, New Orleans, yes, yeah, Smoothie King it's a horrible name. What are you going to do? It's a sponsorship, but I mean, come on. Smoothie King, you know, just looking at the arena, analyzing it, it's got a big upper deck. Certainly, it's an out-of-date design. Looking at the exterior, looks like they kind of did remodel the exterior at least a little bit, but it is certainly dated. It looks like one of those old malls that has the glass, the way it looks with all the beams yeah, that is not a good design there, but that one is probably one of, if not the worst, modern arenas in the NBA. Next one is the Capital One Arena, which I have never liked. Now, I will give them credit. They recently got new seats. Before they did the seats remodel, this was crap, and I still think it is crap. It's just a dated, dated overall design, and if you're a Washington Wizards fan... I mean, it is demor the Wizards, it ge keeps getting worse. First, you give Bradley Beal a supermax contract after the team, I mean, being led by Beal, they can't even make the playoffs. But no, let's reward Bradley Beal with a supermax. And now let's form the most mid-big three ever with Kyle Kuzma and Porzingis and give them all big contracts. You really got to feel bad for Wizards fans, and it doesn't make it any better. You're going into this arena. It's just crap. I mean, listen, it's not the worst thing in the world. It did get a little bit better after the new seats were installed, but still. You know what? I do like the smaller upper deck. Not terrible, uh, but overall, just not a good arena. Uh, kind of the out the exterior of it. Oh my god. 
Yeah, that's, that's typical what you get there. The next one we're going to be looking at is one that recently got knocked down. It is the Bradley Center. So this is the Milwaukee Bucks former home arena and the interior of it. It's just two walls of decks. And when it comes to arenas, this is the worst design possible. The exterior it looks like they have, what are those, speakers or something? It's just an odd setup, really ugly. Uh, but yeah, the interior of this place, just nothing special at all. I mean, that looks like a bank. That looks like a bank on a Saturday afternoon right before it closes. I mean, come on, folks. That's an NBA arena. That's the exterior of it. Fans waiting to get into it. They look pretty miserable. Well, at that point, the Milwaukee Bucks were terrible. If you guys remember when Giannis was like a rookie or his second year, Milwaukee was horrible for so many years. And, I mean, look, at that's the entrance to the arena. My, a lot of these NBA arenas just had horrible, horrible exterior designs. And, again, when you've got just two decks of uh, walls of seating and suites in the middle, it is as neutral as you could do it. A third grader could have, de could have designed this. A preschooler probably could have designed something like this. I mean, it's just so weak. But, listen, we're not going to hate on it too much. Oh, that's sad. That's that's real sad. That's it being destroyed right there, uh, and it's just getting ripped to shreds. But there you can see the upper deck, the way it kind of, it almost curved in. What is that? Like, uh, I never know how to do angles, man. That's an obtuse angle. It curves in there. I just hate angles, honestly. I can't do it with them anymore. Uh, but there it is, and there are just some exterior photos of that right there. The next one, it is Wells Fargo Center. So this is still the home of the Philadelphia 76ers. And this is a very similar design to the Wizards one. They also did get new seating recently. I also know that they're trying to plan a new arena called the 76er Place. And it's a weird design. I'll have to throw up a rendering of it. They've got some type of vegetation lettuce growing on their roof. I mean, come on. We, we don't need lettuce on the roof or anything like that. This is an NBA arena. Maybe put some solar panels up there if you really want to go eco-friendly. But I just don't understand, like, putting, you know, vegetation. If you look at what Target Center did when they went through their exterior remodel, you know, they decided to go with a grass roof. And listen... It's just ugly. I don't know what to say. It's just not a good look. Looking at the interior of this, it is what it is. I don't, I don't like Wells Fargo, but they did get new seats. You know, they're trying to get a new arena. We'll see if they end up getting it. It's just a really dated design. This is Oracle Arena. I mean, look at that. That design is straight from 1964. Oh, my God. And it, it looks so... Like, look at the concrete. Yeah. I'm shocked the, the Warriors were playing at it for as long as they were. You know, everyone knows Oracle. It's hosted so many huge games with the Warriors being very good back in, you know, 2015, 2016. Look at that photo. That should be framed. The two best sports venues in the world, right there. Right there. Oh my goodness. But yeah, Oracle Arena severely dated and it actually lost its own naming rights and you can see it going down there and then Oracle took over for what formerly was AT&T Park in San Francisco with the Giants, the MLB team. So Oracle, not a good one. That is the old Amway Center. It looks like a freaking library. I mean, that's just pathetic, folks. I'm sorry. And then this is the Richmond Coliseum, which hosted Cleveland Cavaliers games. What is that? I don't even know. It looks like an old, looks like one of those old college campuses, you know, that you go like a, a community college. That's what it is. It's a community college. Look at it. Come on. No, but listen, listen. I'm being too hard on it. It it this is it. It's kind of abandoned at this point. It closed in 2019. The Cavs left uh, the Richmond Coliseum in 1994, but it did used to host NBA games. And you can see just a horrific interior design with a massive upper deck that jolts up. And it's just, that's not what you like to see. I do think that third tier of seating, that's a nice touch. I'll give it credit for that. 
I'll give it credit, but overall, I believe that is stone or brick on the exterior. That is such a bad design to have brick as your wall. Oh my goodness, but that is the Richmond Coliseum right there, and those are just some fun photos. I would say overall, the next one, this will be the final one we look at. I think this might be the worst one in NBA history if you factor in everything with it recently hosting games. It is the former Sacramento Kings Arena Sleep Train. Sleepy Train, that's what it's called, yes. And oh my goodness, it look just take a look at it. Sleep Train Arena. You, you, the the exterior, it's like I'm going into like a warehouse job or something. It's a concrete slab of nothing that and then look at the little roundabout. There's a little roundabout in the front. I mean, what is that? That's that's a factory, folks. You you can't convince me otherwise. That is a factory, uh but Sleep Train Arena, you know, it's that the the interior of it very similar to the former Milwaukee Bucks Arena, uh, the Bradley Center. It's just the two-deck approach, very crappy. You've got a massive upper deck. It's horrible. And they actually had a really bad configuration in their lower bowl to where both sides created kind of a V, and it just created really awkward seating. It was just done horribly. In, term of, in terms of the architecture, but yes, yeah, Sleep Train Arena, uh, Sacramento recently, thankfully, got a new arena. Otherwise, I don't know what would happen there, but it is probably the worst arena when you factor in everything with it. Yeah, I mean, it was their arena until like 2018 or 2019 or something around there, you know, so that they've hosted games recently, but that is a terrible, terrible place. Either way, guys, just wanted to go through some of the worst NBA arenas in history. Yes, I'm sure there are arenas that are worse than this, but it's just hard to like talk about something from 1957. You know, it's hard to compare. You know, they, there's more money now, so it's kind of like I want to focus on the ones that are more present. Either way, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.